Hello everyone, I'm Greg Otto with FedScoop TV and welcome to our IT Modernization Hero Series. I'm talking with Dr. Joseph Ronzio, the Deputy Chief Health Technology Officer for the Department of Veteran Affairs. Thanks for joining us today. My pleasure. So to start off, share with me a success story of how your agency has made significant headway in modernizing its IT. Well, we're undergoing a lot of dramatic change right now, okay. so it's kind of fun to see how we're changing policy, how we're trying to offset and reach veterans directly uh, through technology means. Okay. So we're an old hat with telehealth. Um, we've got a large implementation, and I was involved in that in Vision 20, but we're really trying to make it more customer focused uh, so that patients can actually get things where they're at and not be encumbered by coming to clinics all the time. So Tony Scott and the administration is trying to get a bill passed that would codify the $3.1 billion IT modernization fund that's part of the uh, CNAT. Um, what ideas do you or your agency have or what type of systems uh, could be upgraded in this IT modernization fund? Well, that gets to be interesting. So the modernization fund capabilities that we're talking about are primarily around, revolving around upgrading older systems. Uh, most people won't think of it, but in government, we do have a problem where even software updates that you would think are routine are not so routine. Okay. So we may have some outdated systems uh, that are normal business entity systems, but by having older technologies, we have significant cyber risk. So this funding is going to allow us to uplift some of those technologies in addition to adhering to the cloud-first mandates, uh, which will actually help us in the long run since then we won't have to worry about the software updates being controlled by us. That will actually occur as it does for the normal business on the cloud, and that, that will actually save us probably a great level of headache in the future. Okay. So what is the biggest technology challenge? I know you've highlighted some of them already, but what is the biggest technology challenge you've encountered inside your IT modernization program? And what has to change in order to accelerate it? Well, we, uh, Ms. Laverne Council's already made some of those policy changes. Okay. So the biggest challenges are those antiquated systems. And as we're moving forward over the next six, seven months, you're gonna see a lot of changes well, actually you won't, but the employees <laughs> of the VA will. Uh, we'll notice things internally working a little bit smoother, working a little bit better. Um, on the VHA side where I have direct input, um, uh, obviously most of this is going towards the hardcore IT funding. Um, that's what they're looking at. They're looking at the business systems in the back end. Uh, within my role, we're looking at different types of sensors, mobile technologies. We've had really good adoption of iPads within medical providers right okay. now. So as the day-to-day -day VA business is ongoing, the providers who've been on that advanced program are now able to walk around the hospital instead of hunting for the nearest computer to enter information, enter it where they're at. Uh, so the same philosophy we're having for the customers that are the veterans involved, uh, we're actually have, trying to push that capability to our medical staff. So how are advances in cloud computing, containerization, agile development change your outlook or your plans for what's possible over the next 18 months when it comes to governing new IT systems? So the traditional method in government is your waterfall development efforts. Right. Uh, we, we enable contracts with vendors for two to three, even four years. As we're really pushing for mobile technologies, okay. it, we are allowed to play a little bit differently. Uh, we actually have built up a sandbox on the healthcare side that actually has our health systems with test data so that if vendors are used to um, the idea of selling us something and then coming in and then kicking the tires and see if it could work, they're going to have to adjust a little bit for different types of non-innovations. So things that you would apply to business entities or things that c companies are already doing for other healthcare entities instead of coming to us and trying to sell us the million dollar project, we're gonna start to direct them a little bit. And we've done, had some really good test cases so far to our sandbox and say, hey, prove us that it works. Show us. Um, and that actually changes the whole dynamic on contracting. Uh, from some levels, it actually lessens the burden on both sides. Okay. So instead of having this solicitation that's very vague out there, you actually can be very specific on what you're gonna accomplish. We can work through our CRADAs, our research and development agreements, okay. to in the sandbox, and then after they show it works, 
And again, this is open to anybody. We can send a URL to anyone to sign up. After they show us something works, then it becomes a different uh, contract discussion. Uh, obviously, I'm not a contracting officer, so I don't want to get into that piece. <laughs> I always refer to them. They're the experts. But it has changed that dynamic quite a bit. Very, very interesting stuff, Doctor. Thank you for joining us today. Mm -hmm.